Welcome back to the Wealth Building Masterclass Part 3. The next part is usually the most eye-opening and incredible part for most of our clients that we work with. We're going to take a close look at your personal financial checklist. But before I get started, if you haven't watched the first two videos in this series, you're doing yourself a great disservice. So please, please, please go back and start with Part 1 and Part 2. We'll have links to those in the description below. Please start there. Okay, back to your personal financial checklist. I'm often amazed, really, truly amazed, thunderstruck, really, by the stories that I hear during this phase of the process, because people discover available money and funds that have just been sitting there doing nothing for them. They didn't even remember it. They didn't even know they could use it. I'm going to give you some examples. Let's start with your 401k, since it's the most common thing that most people overlook for a source of funding. If you've got a 401k, it's an excellent source of funds that's probably not earning you very much, if anything, while the volatile stock market moves and shakes, right? Especially when you consider custodial fees and all kinds of other hidden charges that not even everyone knows about inside their account. Just go to feex.com, type in your account, and you'll see how many hidden fees are in your 401k. Not everyone knows this, but you can actually borrow money from your 401k to use as a down payment on a new construction rental property. Yes, borrow, not withdraw, borrow from your 401k. That's how I was able to buy my very first rental property, borrowing from it. And get this, if you had an old 401k from a previous job, you can roll that money over into a self-directed IRA that gives you control over your retirement by using that money to invest in real estate. Now, while we're on the topic of retirement accounts, I want you to consider for a second the Roth IRA or other retirement accounts that you might have. All of those, all of them can be rolled over into a self-directed IRA account or a SDIRA, SDIRA. Now, how about stocks or mutual funds? Do you have any money in those that you can use? How about a primary residence? Do you own your own home? If so, do you know how much equity you've got available? If you've got some equity, you could seek out a home equity line of credit or a HELOC, one of my favorite ways to invest using the equity in the home that I live in. And possibly you could even refinance your home and get some additional money that way with a cash out refinance. But a home equity line of credit is one of my favorite ways to invest. Do you have a savings account with a large sum that's just been sitting there collecting dust? Now, I'm not asking you to drain your personal savings or to wipe out your emergency fund, but if there's enough for you to actually withdraw and put that to work, perhaps as a down payment, you should. A savings account isn't going to make you money. It's sitting there actually losing value because of inflation. So let's say you have $100 in your savings account today. Well, guess what? Tomorrow, it's worth less because of inflation. So why not actually use that money towards a performing asset like a rental property that will be producing monthly cash flow? Totally changes the game. Perhaps you own some properties that you would like to sell. Maybe they're not performing well for you for some reason and they're causing a lot of stress. This is where a 1031 exchange would come in handy. Now, a 1031 exchange basically allows you to exchange your current property for another one of similar value without having to pay capital gains taxes on that exchange. Another thing you might think about is partnering up with another investor. Do you have any family members or friends that might be interested in investing? How about a colleague? Partnering with someone is a great way to get started when you don't have as big a chunk of change to start with. Maybe they do, right? That's how you could come together and partner. Now, I want to revisit the idea of leverage once again. I've mentioned it a couple of times already, but I really want you to understand the importance of leveraging your money. So to help explain, I'm going to give you a couple of examples. Since I'm a very visual learner, seeing it in black and white really drove it home for me. So maybe it'll do the same for you. Let's start with an easy example. Let's say you've got $150,000 to invest in real estate right now. Okay. Now let's pretend you have the option to buy an existing rehabilitated property for $150,000 cash or the option to buy three properties for $450,000 using other people's money, meaning a bank's money financing. Now, we'll suppose you get a monthly rental income of $1,300 per property. Now with the all cash purchase of the single renovated home, 
you'll have $1,300 monthly gross rental income coming in. No monthly mortgage payment. And let's guess you'll have about $200 in taxes each month, a $40 per month insurance fee, $40 monthly maintenance fee, and $100 a month for a property management fee, okay? That gives you a monthly net cash flow of roughly $920 a month or $11,040 each year. That's a cash on cash return of 7.3% with no principal reduction and an annual appreciation rate of 2% or about $3,000. So with the all cash purchase option of this single rehabbed home, your IRR or internal rate of return would be about 9.3%. Okay, now I want you to remember these numbers. Now, I want you to look at the non-recourse financing option to buy three new construction rental properties with your $150,000 that you're working with. So let's dive into these numbers. Your purchase price now for the three new properties is $450,000, but you're only using $150,000 of your own money as a down payment on the loan. That gives you a mortgage of $300,000. In that case, your monthly gross rental income is $3,900. If each property provides $1,300 a month, you have a payment of $1,650 per month for the $300,000 mortgage. But remember, that it's covered by the rent that the tenants are paying you. So we're gonna estimate property taxes at about $600 a month and insurance at $120. Let's put back $120 a month for maintenance expenses and then $300 a month towards property management costs. Now, here's the fun part. Your monthly net cash flow is $1,100 a month or $13,320 a year. That gives you an 8.8% cash on cash return. Consider a $4,650 principal reduction and a 2% appreciation rate that equals $9,000. So when you do the math, having the three new construction properties will give you an 18% internal rate of return per year. The numbers speak for themselves, guys. But I also want to remind you that as your rental income pays off your mortgage, your net cash flow is actually going to increase dramatically. Remember, tenants are in these properties paying rent. So instead of the $1,110 in monthly cash flow you start out with, you'll be soon at $2,760 a month or $33,120 a year. That is the true cash flow. You shouldn't even consider the monthly cash flow as money in your pocket until that mortgage is paid off. So you could use that $1,100 a month to pay off the mortgage faster or build it up for defense against emergencies, etc. The real cash flow, though, comes once your rental income has paid off that mortgage. Eventually, your $150,000 investment will provide you a yearly income of $33,120, all through leveraging your money in the smartest and most effective way possible. Do you see how all of this works, guys? All right. You've set your goals, you've learned where to start looking for money, and you know the power of leveraging that money. Now, the next big step is making sure that you keep on doing your homework and your due diligence and deciding what company you want to work with when you're ready to invest. That's exactly what we're going to cover in part four in our video series. So I will see you in the next video.